Hi guys, you welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at the whole of things that you need to understand before you sit for physics practical, either in WAEC or in any exam. Number one, you need to first of all ask yourself that what exactly is examiner expecting from you as a student who is sitting for WAEC practical or whatever physics practical you might be sitting for. I want you to understand something. If you are very conversant with this channel, you will see that we teach physics just for you to understand physics, not for you to know physics. It's never my problem for you to know physics because me, myself, I don't know it. So how can I give what I don't know, what I don't have? But I want you to understand it because what makes it simple for me and easy for me to communicate physics to you is because I actually understand it. And that's why Subsequently, in this channel, the whole of the thing I'll be teaching you is for you to understand physics, not to cram it down to your precaution level and how to set your apparatus. Now, guys, as a YX student, you know what you are expecting to make A in your results. And what are those things to do well? And number one thing that guarantees you success in your physics exam is your practical. If your practical is very okay, then you are about... 40% sure that you are not going to make less than C in your results. Are you getting this now? Once your practical is okay. Now, what are those things that will make your practical okay? Aside from the fact that probably you get the experiment done well. You might get the experiment done well and yet you are going to fail. How? Let's start from your table of observation. In your practical, your table of observation is key because examiner will never and never go back to the laboratory to carry out that experiment given to you. They will never do that, trust me. But examiner will always rely on the results that you provide for them. Although they have idea of what the results should look like, but they rely more on what you provide for them as the accurate result. And how do you pre uh, present your result that will make examiner be sure that, yes, this person actually know what he or she is doing? Number one is to pay maximum attention to the number of decimal places that you are putting your result. Now, how do we know the number of decimal places to put our result? Get this clear. I've been saying it in all of my lectures that when you are dealing with practical, you should know this and that. And I will still repeat it again just because of you. Now, watch. You will be given some values, let's say given values, given values. What do I mean by given values? The value that reflects in your question. For example, you are given mass of 50 gram. Are you getting this now? And you are asked to suspend the mass on a meter rule and adjust the meter rule until it's balanced horizontally. Record the balancing point of the meter rule and repeat the experiment for the value of mass equal 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. Now, those 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 that we mentioned, all these are given in the question. So, this is what we refer to as a given value. Because you are told in the question. Are you getting it now? Uh -huh. So, how do you report this? Once it is a given value, you leave it in one decimal place. Am I making sense? Once it is a given value, you do what? You leave it in one decimal place. With an exemption. There is an exemption to this. What is that exemption? Is that if, for instance, the given value is 2 centimeter. 3 centimeter, 4 centimeter. That is, the given value is in centimeter. For example, you are provided with a potentiometer, a connecting wire, a key, and two ohm standard resistors with an ammeter and a jockey. Are you getting this now? Connect the circuits as shown in the diagram above. Are you following me? Now, place the jockey at 10 centimeter mark and record the value on your ammeter. Are you following? Then, 
Repeat the procedure, evaluate I inverse and repeat the procedure with other values of L such as 12 cm, 14 cm, 16 cm, 18 cm. You know, that is also a given value. But that given value is in centimeter. Because it's in centimeter, when you are reporting a result in centimeter, you need to leave it in two decimal places. Therefore, that is the exemption that I'm talking about. So if the given value is in centimeter, then it has to be in two decimal places. Are you following? Please excuse me, let me check something. Okay, guys. I need to check my camera if it's actually uh, still functioning. So let's go on with this. Okay. So I believe you understand this now. So if it is other values, other than centimeter, you leave it in one decimal place because it's a given value. But if it is a centimeter, like the example I cited now, you leave it in what? Two decimal places. Now, your serial numbers, you have to take note of that. Your serial numbers, that is the numbers of time that you repeat the same procedure. Are you getting this now? Is what we refer to as serial number. Those ones, they are not meant to be in any decimal place. You just add dots to them to make them significant. Are you getting this now? Am I making sense? Yeah, awesome. If you understand that, let's move on. Now, for every reading that you are now taking by yourself, that is... As we said earlier, that you place the jockey at 10 cm mark and record the value of the ammeter. That value of ammeter is what you are picking from the measuring instrument, isn't it? Because you are picking it from the measuring instrument, you have to leave it in two decimal places. Any reading that you are taking by yourself from the measuring instrument, either from the meter room, either from the ammeter, either from your any any either from the stopwatch. Any instrument that you are taking result from, you leave your answer in two decimal places. Am I making sense? Then the third one that you need to understand about under this table of observation is that any result that you are getting by square root, division, multiplication, are you getting this now? That is evaluated results. Result that you are getting through the results, uh, result you are getting through your calculator. Like, you are told that, given that L is 10 centimeter, make record the value of what? The current I. Let's say current I is 0, 0.0 uh, ampere. Then you want to evaluate I inverse. I inverse will be 1 all over 0 0.70, isn't it? You have to use calculator to get this value, isn't it? Now, if you are using calculator to get this value, you have to leave your answer in four significant figure or you leave it in three decimal places. I'll repeat, four significant figure or three decimal places. That is how you should report your result. Now, having to understand the numbers of decimal places that you need to keep at the back of your mind when you are taking your reading or when you are reporting your work, your experiment. Another thing you need to take cognizance of is that you must not paint on your table. Very, very crucial. Once you paint on your table, it is minus what? Minus five marks, if I'm not mistaken. I think I've forgotten how they deduct those marks, but I think it's minimum of five marks. Once you shade, I get to this now. And it's not advisable for you to write first with pencil, and then you now write with biro. So you now clean up the pencil later. No, uh, the examiner will be suspicious. I get to this now. Like, Probably you have been going with the wrong reading before, then somebody do my practice to give you the accurate reading, and that's why you're clean. So, best thing for you to do is to do what? Pick a rough sheet of paper, or at the back of your book, the back of your answer booklet, you are allowed to work there. Do your rough work there, then you cancel it when you're done. It is allowed. That is what is expected of you. That's why you see that YF is not giving you extra paper for you to do your rough work. They expect you to do all your rough work at the back of your answer booklet. And when you're done, you will cancel it. Is that making sense to you now? Are you getting this fact? Cool. So if that should be the case now. When you are taking your reading, let the rough sketch of your table be at the back end of your answer booklet. Are you getting me now? So, when you are done with the reading and you are sure of what you have, not to clean anything again, and that is why you need to mind your business. 
when you're in exam or it's not the teamwork whereby you need to share with your friend and know what they have don't confuse yourself just go direct with the accurate thing that you've done are you getting me now therefore face your problem don't let anybody confuse you go with your own personal reading and that's why you are watching this video so that you can do something correct and you'll be sure that yes you are correct am i making sense right now so once you're done with your rough work you can now draw a clean and clear table then report your experiment before you move to the next question so that is that about what the table of value please and please don't clean and don't what paint all right let's move on to the next thing that you need to understand when you are doing this practical another thing you need to understand supposed to be the first thing i talk about but i know some of us might not watch this video to the end that's why i quickly mentioned the one that is very very crucial now the one i want to talk about now is your confidence your what your confidence you need to be confident when you are dealing with physics practical physics practical is very simple that the examiner is the one telling you the answer but because you fail to listen you are thinking that the examiner actually wants to put you wrong and that's why they set a very complex question forget about it physics practical is always very very well simple either you've done it before or you've not done it before it doesn't matter all that matters is what read clearly to yourself read clearly to yourself and carry out what you read because the question will be telling you what you need to do at a time so you don't need to panic like are you doing it right or wrong or, or not just take your time listen to yourself read the question out to yourself and carry out what you are reading it's as simple as that so you have to be confident about what you are doing is that taking on okay haven't know that you are going to be confident what and what again should i need to be cognizant about when it comes to my practical when it comes to your practical and that is why i'm here you need to know that for every question there is always a theoretical part of that question for number one you have the practical aspect of it then you have the section b asking you about some fundamental theoretical statement about that particular word practical am i making sense now therefore you need to understand some certain things about every practical. And that's why I'm going to be giving you a clue on what to go and read about in order for you to answer the B aspect of this particular experiment that you are expecting in 2022. That is next week Tuesday. Okay, guys, if that should be the case, now what should I go and prepare for? You need to go and read more about moment of force. That is your number one question. The normal question is under equilibrium of forces. And then, what and what do they want to know about equilibrium of forces? They want to know, can you actually calculate for the mass of a meter rule using the principle of moment? Can you? If not, you have the time to go and prepare for it now. Otherwise, you can check the description box. I have a link for you there where I discuss moment in detail. That is, equilibrium of forces, I discuss it as a topic. You can watch there. And if you're a very regular student in this particular channel, you must have watched the video. So, just go and refresh your brain and read more to it. So, you'll be asked some questions such as, what is moment of a force? What are the conditions for equilibrium of a parallel forces? What are the conditions for equilibrium under non-parallel forces? Those are the likely questions under number one. Okay, number two. Your number two question is also mechanics. Wow, you're surprised that this year you're having two mechanics. Even a teacher asked me this afternoon, how come we are having two mechanics this time around? This is the first time I'm seeing it. And a colleague answered him immediately. Rahek has the choice to do anything they like. So this year, you are expecting what? Two mechanics. Equilibrium of forces. And funny enough, should I tell you something? The two mechanics, they are under the same topic equilibrium of forces and the second one is talking about what flotation so what and what do you need to go and read about flotation you have to understand the archimedes principle very very well understand the archimedes principle understand the floating law that is what causes an object to flow what is relative density you need to understand what we call relative density and you ask yourself is the relative density Oh, sorry, is the density of a cold water the same thing as the density of normal water? Is the same thing as the density of hot water? You need to understand that, guys. Those are the areas that you need to focus on when it comes to the question number two. And question number three, the father of all, is always constant, guys. And that is what electricity. That question number three is awesome. 
because it has to do with potentiometer. And what are you going to read about potentiometer? You have to know the advantage of potentiometer over meter bridge. Absolutely, you need to know that. The advantage of potentiometer over what? Meter bridge or wisdom bridge, you need to understand that. How can you use potentiometer to measure resistance of a wire? You need to know that. How can you use potentiometer to measure internal resistance of a cell? You need to understand that. And you need to understand what? Arrangement of, L, uh, arrangement of uh, resistance in the cycles. In the nutshell, read everything that has to do with what? Ohm's law. Then, the last part of this video is the precaution aspect of it. Guys, you have always been cramming precaution. And that's why the first thing you want to ask this question, you want to ask a teacher in the question, in, in, the, in, the, in the practical class is that, what will be the precaution? What will be the pre precaution? is not a language that you don't understand. Precaution is what you do to ensure accurate results. Remember, this channel is not to build you to know, but it's to build you to understand physics so that you can talk physics. Okay, if that should be the case, let me give you a very quick hint about precaution. When you are dealing with your experiments, look at all of those things that you put in place in order for you to ensure accurate results. Take for instance, if you are dealing with electricity, you want to clean the terminal of what? of all your apparatus to ensure that the connecting wire is touching the actual what terminal. Otherwise, if it is rust, the connecting wire will not be connected to the, uh, to the terminal and then the instrument might not work. So you clean that before you start doing your experiment. That is your number one precaution. Number two, you take your reading two eyes because you want to ensure accurate results. It's also a precaution. Number three, you calm down and look at it to avoid parallax error. It's also what? It's also a precaution. So you just have to be cognizant of what and what you are doing to ensure accurate results. And the last aspect of it is how to plot graph. Many students used to have this problem of how to plot graph. And they always ask me this question. When is my graph said to be correct? Is it when I'm having alternate points outside or something? Don't disturb yourself. I have provided you a detail. I've provided you what? A detailed video on how to plot graph. The do and don'ts of graph. You will learn it in that particular video. And you can check the description box to know and watch that particular video. And if you're a very regular student on this channel, you must have watched that. And don't forget, this is where I'm going to be stopping now. And by tomorrow, first thing tomorrow, I'll be dropping video on mechanics and electricity. Then later in the day, I'm going to be dropping video on the second question, and that is our flotation. The reason why I'm not going to drop the question, the thought, uh, what was it called? The video sequentially like drop number one number two number three is because i'm still finding it difficult to get two gram of max that i'll be using for the second question and i'm very sure i should be able to get that in time soon before your what before your exam so stay tuned to this channel if you are yet to subscribe don't forget to do that and turn on the notification bell so that anytime i drop video you will be the first person to be notified oh Thank you guys for the 7,000 subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. Let us do more. We are going to 100,000 subscribers. And I know we can do it. We have millions of students in the whole world. And I believe you are learning one or two things in this channel. So share within your friends. Don't be stingy. Is that taken? So without any further ado, we'll meet in the next class. Thank you guys.